Hi again, I'm John Nielsen with Wing Chun Hall, here to discuss Wing Chun, your best self-defense option. And since I've explained where Wing Chun came from, we can now explore how it got from there to where it is today. The most significant contributions were made by four people, Lung Jian, Chen Wa Shun, Ng Chung So, and Yip Man. Lung Jian synthesized 19th century combat into one cohesive, recognizable, transmittable system. Before Lung Jian, whatever was going on was indistinguishable from anything else that was happening in the Pearl River Delta. Let's compare it to soccer. Okay. Around the globe, there are millions of soccer coaches, but only a handful of those come up with a system that other, or a method, that other coaches are willing to follow. This is the kind of innovation that Lung Jian made for combat. He developed the Lung Jian method. This is the kind of innovation that is recognized by copyright law. Now, a method is a brilliant step, but without an institution, a method won't survive. Lung Jian seemed mostly interested in sharing his information with his family and close friends. Despite his later efforts in Gulao Village, we have no evidence to suggest that Lung Jian was interested in creating a self-perpetuating institution, but Chen Washan was. Chen Washan was the first to move Wing Chun into a commercial enterprise. This is no easy task and shouldn't be likely ignored, but my co-author Ben has written an excellent article on the contributions of Chen Washan, and I would just direct you to that um, article in the description below. I would just like to add that Chen Washan, without his efforts, like so many other combat systems, Wing Chun probably would not have survived. Now, the next step is, after the institution, is a network. Of all of Lung Jian and Chen Washan students, only Ng Chung So created a successful network. During his time in the Zhang Yi schools, Ng Chung So churned out Wing Chun teachers. However, we know very little about Ng Chung So, except that he was able to use his political connections to further his Wing Chun efforts. Sadly, those same connections led to the undoing of most of his work. When the communists, the opposing political party, took control, they closed down the Zhang Yi schools, outlawed the practice of Wing Chun, and executed some prominent teachers. Yip Man observes all of this, does his best to stay apolitical for the rest of his life, and from the safety of Hong Kong, recreates the institution and the network. Now, the latter half of our book is, is dedicated to the contributions of Ip Man. So again, I don't want to add a lot except to say that Ip Man's efforts contribute to the globalization of Wing Chun. Ip Man learned from Chen Wachun, Lung Bik, Ng Chung So, and all his Kung Fu brothers. He then distilled that, that information into a contemporary program for the youth of Hong Kong. Mainly his students were young men who would later leave Hong Kong and go all around the globe to further their academic training. This made it possible when Bruce Lee's fame created global interest in Wing Chun for people to go and find someone semi nearby who could transfer and share that information. And that brings us pretty much up to date. It did not address the problems that this globalization caused. That's a topic for another video. But it does bring us to the question, what is the next phase in Wing Chun's development? As always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and support. And I'll see you next time.